What's up guys, Kalipas Tech coming back at you with another video. This is the beginner's guide to the Motorola Moto G Stylus 2021. In this video, I'm going to be going over some of the basic things that you're going to want to know about this phone when you're setting it up for the first time. Now this is not going to be a tutorial on how to use the stylus. I will be going over that in another video, but this video is going to show you a lot of the basic features of this phone and how to use them. That being said, let's get into it. So the first thing I'm going to show you about this phone is how to customize the home screen. Now you can technically do this through the settings menu, but there's actually a much faster and easier way to do it where all the settings end up in one spot. So all you're going to need to do is press and hold a finger anywhere on the screen. And this is going to show up. You're going to be able to go through home settings, widgets, wallpapers, styles, and really personalize your home screen to make it your own. The next thing I'm going to show you is how to get the battery percentage on the status bar. Now what I'm talking about is right up here. The battery is showing here, but you can't see the actual percentage unless you pull down the quick menu and then you can see it right there. But I'm going to show you how to get it permanently on the status bar. So first we're going to go to settings battery and toggle on battery percentage. Once you turn this on, the battery percentage is going to show up on your status bar without you needing to pull down your quick menu. The next thing I'm going to go over is screenshots. Now first of all, the standard basic way to take a screenshot with this phone is to press and hold the power key and the volume down key at the same time. Now it's important to remember you can't just press it that's not going to do anything. You do have to hold it for just a second. And then this little toolbar comes up, which is really cool. You can edit the screenshot, crop it, all sorts of things. And when you're done with it, you can either share it, save it, or discard it. Now, I think the toolbar is really nice and useful, but you might want to disable it. And you definitely can do this. So what you're going to do is go to Settings, Display, Advanced, in screenshot toolkit right here. By default, it is toggled on, but you can turn it off. And now when you take a screenshot, there's not gonna be a toolkit. This little banner is still gonna show up. There's really nothing you can do about that. But at least if you don't want anything showing up at the bottom of the screen here, it's gonna be a little bit less intrusive. Now, in addition to that, there's also a second method you can use to take a screenshot. By default, the setting is deactivated, so we're going to have to go to Settings, System, Gestures, and we're going to hit Three Finger Screenshot. Then you're going to want to toggle this on. And now, instead of pressing the buttons to take a screenshot, which you still can with this feature on, by the way, that doesn't change. But what does change is now, you can put three fingers spread apart anywhere on your screen and it's going to take a screenshot just like normal. I actually really like this method a lot. It's not only really cool looking, but it's also super convenient because now you don't have to press and hold any buttons, which can be a pain sometimes. It just streamlines the process a lot. And other devices like Samsung Galaxy phones, for example, do have a similar type of alternate screenshot method. But in my experience, I have noticed that the Motorola Moto G Stylus 2021 does incorporate this feature just a little bit better. The next thing I'm going to show you is how to control your screen timeout. Have you ever been looking at something in your screen falls asleep in the middle of it, or maybe the opposite. You forget to actually lock your phone and the screen stays on forever and drains your battery. Well, I'm going to show you how you can avoid this based on whatever situation you're in. So we're going to go to settings, go to display, advanced. And now there are two different sections we can go to to simply change the screen timeout. We're going to hit screen timeout right here. Mine is set to the longest setting for the sake of these videos, but you might not want it to be like that. So I suggest playing around with it and seeing which time works best for you because depending on what you do with your phone, it's going to be different for everybody. Now you might really want to avoid having your screen fall asleep on you while you're doing something on your phone without having to risk draining your battery life unnecessarily. Well, there's actually another way to solve this problem without sacrificing battery life. We're going to go to attentive display and toggle this feature on. What this feature does 
is uses the front facing camera to detect your face and whenever it is detecting your face the screen is not going to fall asleep so you're not going to have to worry about your phone falling asleep on you while you're doing something anymore but at the same time it's not going to have a super long screen timeout time so you also won't have to worry about draining your battery if you forget to lock your phone. This is a pretty new feature that manufacturers have been putting into smartphones and it's a real nice one to have so I'm glad they added it to this phone. The next thing I'm going to show you is a few shortcuts to get to your camera. Now the first one is activated by default and that is double tapping your power key and that's going to open up your camera. The other one is a little bit more complicated, but honestly a lot cooler, so I'm going to show you how to do that. We're going to go to Settings, System, Gestures, and hit Quick Capture. Make sure the feature is toggled on, and now all you need to do to open your camera is go like this. It does take a little getting used to. It's not the easiest thing in the world, but once you do it a few times, that muscle memory is going to kick in and it's going to be super easy to use. And it's actually even a little bit easier than double tapping the power key because it's just basically one swift motion. At the end of the day, it is nice to have several different shortcuts to get to your camera. So you might have noticed this phone doesn't have any buttons at the bottom. Instead, it just has this little bar that I've been using for navigation. Let me show you exactly how it works. So instead of pressing a home button, all you need to do is swipe up. To go to your recent apps, you're going to be dragging your finger up from the bottom. And to go back, slide your finger from one side of the phone to the other. Now also keep in mind, it doesn't matter which direction, you can do it the other way and it's going to do the same thing. This system is called gesture navigation. I'm a big fan of it, but if you don't like it and would prefer buttons, you can actually get that back. So we're going to go to settings, system all the way at the bottom, gestures, and system navigation right here. Now you're going to have the option to choose between gesture navigation, which is what we have now, and three button navigation. Three button navigation is going to put you right back in the three button navigation system that classic Android phones have. I honestly like both of them, but I do suggest playing around with them and seeing which one works best for you because it's really going to be up to your preference as to which one's better. So the next thing I'm going to show you is, in my opinion, super important when you're setting up a new phone and that is the notifications. Now as you get new apps, they're going to stack up and all of them are going to want to send you random notifications throughout the day and you're going to be constantly spammed with them if you don't take care of it really early on. So I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. We're going to go to settings right here and hit apps and notifications and hit notifications right here. So by default, notifications are going to be enabled for all the apps you have. Now there are some, like for example the camera, that really don't even count. I don't think you're ever going to get a notification from the camera. But there are other apps that are probably going to send you a lot of notifications that you might not necessarily want to get. So if you ever do get a notification and decide you want to turn them off from that app, then you can go to this screen and you're going to be able to see all the apps that have given you notifications in the past seven days. And once you decide you don't want notifications from that app, you can just disable it and it's not going to bother you anymore. Now one thing that goes hand in hand with notifications is sounds. We are currently in the main settings menu once again. We're going to hit sounds right here and take a look at what we got. As you can see here I have everything muted and if you don't want any disruptive sound this is basically what you're going to do. There are some phones out there that actually have more of a mute button or a vibrate button. Something that really will prevent the phone from making lots of noises but unfortunately with this phone this is basically how you mute everything. Now there are other things too, like the audio effects which I have disabled. When those are enabled, they're going to make a lot of sounds. For example, when you're typing, it's going to make this little popping sound that I personally find really annoying, but you might like it, so you might not want to do that. There's another feature you can get to if you hit advanced right here and go all the way down. There is a flip for do not disturb if you hit this and enable it which it is on right now for me. All you need to do to completely silence your phone is just put it face down 
it's going to vibrate a little and then it's not going to make any noises and it'll resume normal activities when you pick it up. This can be a really useful feature if you're trying to do something where you don't want to be distracted even from text messages and calls and stuff. So you can just put your phone face down, but if you do manually put it on do not disturb, it can be really easy to forget that you did that and then you'd miss important notifications. So this way you can put your phone in that position and it's not gonna bother you until you're ready to resume normal activities and then you can pick it right back up. The next thing I'm gonna show you is how to get dark mode. Now dark mode is exactly what it sounds. It turns everything on your screen from light colors to dark colors. It's pretty cool. A lot of people do it for aesthetic purposes. Some people do it just because it's easier on their eyes. Whatever the case is, I'm gonna show you how to get it. We are in the main settings menu as always. You're gonna hit display, hit advanced, and then toggle on dark theme. And there we go, dark theme is on. Real easy to do. The final thing I'm gonna show you is how to change your screen lock. Now, the screen lock is basically how you get into your phone, whether that's through face unlock, through a fingerprint scanner, or a pin, or a password, or a pattern, whatever you wanna use. We're gonna go to settings, in security, and now screen lock by default is the pin. When you're setting up the phone for the first time, you're gonna to wanna to do that. Now, if you wanna use biometrics, you're gonna to have to set up your fingerprints and or your face, whichever one you wanna use, and then you'll be able to change things in the screen lock section. Let's say you wanna change that now. You're gonna hit this right here. It's gonna have you put in your pin, or if you don't have one yet, if this is the first time you're ever using your phone, it's gonna have you set one up. And now, once you're in here, you're gonna be able to choose your screen lock. So swipe is basically nothing. A pattern is super easy. There's really not even a point to it when you have a fingerprint scanner and face unlock. A pin is what most people use. And if you wanna get real tight with the security, you can use a password. So you might be wondering, how do you actually set up face unlock and fingerprints? Well, all you really need to do is register them and they're automatically gonna start working. You can also register multiple fingers. So you can use any of your fingers to unlock your phone or even another user if you want. All you're gonna have to do is hit fingerprint, type in your pin, and now you can add as many fingerprints as you want. And touch to unlock, I would keep that on. That's basically saying, no matter what, whenever you press your fingerprint scanner with a correct finger, it's gonna unlock the phone. I think it's really convenient. If you don't want it to do that, then you can just toggle it off. And now, when you try to unlock your phone, you can't just unlock it like this. You actually have to hit the power key first and then you can unlock it. I don't really see that much of a difference. I feel like there's no point in having this off, but if for some reason you don't wanna have it on, you can easily just turn it off. But that was my beginner's guide for the Motorola Moto G Stylus 2021. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I hope you found this information useful as well. If you did, be sure to leave a thumbs up and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.